Welcome to another session of Dentistry and More. Today's topic is about the parts of an X-ray machine. So we expose our intraoral radiographs as well as our extraoral radiographs with the help of this machine. And the X-ray tube head plays an important role in this machine. So the machine consists of a control panel. Then we have an extension arm and a tube head. The control panel consists of an on and off switch, an indicator, as well as indicator light and then we have an uh, exposure button wherein once you press this exposure button you can uh, hear a noise and then once the noise fades off it indicates that the exposure cycle has been completed. Then we have certain control devices which regulate the x-ray beam such as that of a timer. So the timer indicates the exposure time period. Then we have an extension arm. That extension arm, it helps us suspend the X-ray tube head and also it houses the electrical wires that extend from the control panel to that of your X-ray tube head. Then in the tube head, it consists of a metal shielding or a metal housing. You can see this blue outline. That is your metal shielding. And then we have surrounding this metal shielding, we have a, there is an insulating oil that is placed within this X-ray tube head. And then we have the glass tube or the glass envelope which surrounds the uh, cathode and the anode. So I'll be explaining what are the functions for each of these materials that have been used in your X-ray machine. So in the metal housing, there's a blue outline that you are seeing that is enclosing the X-ray tube. It uh, helps to surround the X-ray tube and as well as a transformer. And it also protects the X-ray tube and grounds the high voltage compound. Then we have an insulating oil as the name such as the insulation is the property that is seen in this. So the surrounding oil helps to maintain the insulation properties of the glass envelope and also it insulates the tube from the metal shield. Then we have our ne negative cathode as we have already studied during our school days there. Cathode is negatively charged and the anode is a positively so we have a negatively charged cathode wherein it contains uh, the filament as well as the focusing cup. The filament is that source of electrons which is found within the x-ray tube and the material of choice is tungsten. So a coil of tungsten wire with a higher which has a higher atomic number that is 74 and melting point of 3380 degrees Celsius is being used where it has been mounted onto two strong stiff wires which support it and also carry the electric current. So these mounted wires lead through the uh, glass envelope and serve as a connection to the low as well as the high voltage electrical source. And how this electrons are being lost from the filament is by the process called as the thermionic emission. So the filament has been heated uh, to incandescence through a range of temperature by varying voltage wherein it helps this uh, this hot filament emits the electrons from the tungsten wire and it is also said that it is found to be uh, the rate of how much the electrons are being produced is uh, directly proportional to the temperature that is being used. So that is why this process is called as that of thermionic emission and uh, there is also another material that we use is the thorium that is one person thorium. So 1% thorium is used because uh, to, for this uh, material, the filament to last longer and also to prevent this property called as sun tanning. What it means is that sun tanning is that once over a long, a long period of time, there is a vaporization of the filament that can occur. So th there will be particles that will vaporize and then solidify onto the glass uh, envelope of the x-ray tube, which can lead to this condition called as sun tanning. Once the sun tanning occurs, what happens is that it decreases the output of your x-rays as well as it uh, causes destruction to the vacuum and also causes ultimately a tube failure. So that is why we use 1% of thorium to the filament material. Next we have a focusing cup. So in the focusing cup, the uh, material of choice is the molybdenum. So it is nothing other than a negatively charged concave reflector cup of molybdenum that houses this filament and the focusing cup what it does is that it electrostatically focuses the electrons emitted by the incandescent filament 
into a narrow beam which has been directed towards the uh, rectangular area in the anode called as a focal spot. So what happens is that it helps to facilitate the movement of this electron cloud and uh, it helps to move these electrons towards the uh, anode that is towards the target. And uh, one more reason for why we have a vacuum uh, glass envelope within the X-ray tube is that it helps to, uh, so no, like once this uh, X-rays are being produced, these electrons will not collide with these gas molecules. If any air is being present, there will be an interaction between these gas molecules with that of the electrons. So which can lead to a burnout, condition called as a burnout or a oxidation of the filament. So this can be prevented by vacuumating the glass envelope. We have the positively charged anode. So earlier we mentioned that the negatively charged electrons that have been uh, ejected from the filament, it hits against the target that is the anode. So in the target it contains a thin tungsten plate which is embedded within the solid copper stem. So tungsten is the material of choice because it has a higher atomic number that is 74. And in this higher atomic number, it indicates that there is a higher charge on the nucleus as well as there are more photons. And also there is higher binding energy of the orbital electrons. So what happens is that uh, it gives rise to the increased interaction between the electrons and the atoms. Thereby there is an increase in the X-ray photon production. So next property is that it has a higher melting point that is around 3380 degrees Celsius. So what it states that if there is any temperature rise, the, the target will not get melted. And then next we have the next property is the low vapor pressure. So once there is a, again, if there is a higher temperature, the target does not get vaporized or it does not get evaporated. Then we have a higher thermal conductivity. It is stated that when comparing tungsten to that of copper stem, tungsten is found to be a poor conductor of heat. So uh, and that is why we uh, and embed this tungsten type uh, target within the copper stem because copper is a good thermal conductor. So there is a high higher thermal conductivity occurring in this uh, target. Then what this target does is that it helps to convert this kinetic energy of these electrons that are generated from the filament to an X-ray photon. So in, we have earlier mentioned that those electrons it hits against a target or an area or within the target which is called as a focal spot. So this focus, it is stated that the, the size of the focal spot decreases the image sharpness increases. So we what we have to in order to do that in order to succeed in having a size of the focal spot decreased or smaller it uh, we have to we follow this principle called as the line focus principle. Line focus principle or the Benson line focus principle states that we need to achieve a smaller focal spot size at the same time to uh, and, and, uh, and also the heat should be generated over a wide area and the target. So in order to achieve that we have to uh, angulate the an anode or the target in a 20, 15 to 20 degree inclination. So what happens is that the electrons bombarding to this target we will get in focal spot sizes of around 1 into 1 mm in size. Whereas if in case it is found to be in a 90 degree, what happens is that electrons when hit perpendicularly, the focal spot size will be more as compared to that of this apparent focal spot size. So the actual focal spot size will get when placed in a 90 degrees around 1 to 3 mm in size. So that is why we need to attain a focal spot size smaller so as to get a sharper image. So this is why it is called as a line focus principle. So till now we spoke about the components of the X-ray machine. Next we will be speaking about how these X-rays have been produced. So once the uh, X-ray machine is turned on, the electric current moves towards the uh, control panel and then it is headed towards the tube head via uh, electrical wires in the extension arm. And then this current is directed towards the filament in the cathode with the help of your step down transformer. What is the role of the step down transformer is that it tries to convert the line voltage of 110 to 220 volts and 
meaning it steps down so it reduces to 3 to 5 volts so that it can heat the tungsten filament once the filament has been heated up it undergoes a process called as a thermionic emission so and that uh, electron cloud is being formed in the focusing cup and then this cloud has been uh, uh, activated where it where when the exposure button is being pushed on the high voltage circuit is being activated and this electron cloud produced in the cathode is accelerated across the x-ray tube and it hits against the target on the anode so the electrons when it hits and it strikes the tungsten target the energy that is the kinetic energy is being converted to an x-ray energy and heat so among that uh, there is a 99 percent of dissipation of heat and this heat is being carried away by the help of the copper stem and also some, some of them are being absorbed by the insulating oil in the tube head so it uh, so the insulating oil plays an inherent filtration role so it tries to filter all these un uh, unwanted uh, heat and the x-rays and then what happens is that the x-rays it is being produced and it hits against all the surfaces within the glass envelope so what happens uh, so this the leaded glass housing it tries to prevent the x-rays from ex uh, escaping from the x-ray tube head so only a few portion that is the sum of the portion of the x-rays have been uh, exited out with the uh, through this vent that is a unleaded glass window that is there's the arrow where I'm pointing out. So through this, uh, is the X-rays have been passed across the unleaded glass window. It is then uh, it move, travels through the tube head seal, then the aluminium filters, which helps to uh, uh, filter the long wavelength X-rays from the X-ray uh, beam, and then it moves across the collimator, wherein the collimator is controls the size and the shape of the X-ray beam, and then. This, this X-ray beam then travels through the uh, lead line pair position indicating device and then it exits through the tube head at the opening of the position indicating device. So this is a, a schematic or a flow chart of how the X-rays are being produced. So again I will repeat it. Uh, there is an electric current that passes through the control panel and then through the control panel it reaches the uh, filament through the help of your step down transformer. So the filament gets heated up to release the process called as a thermionic emission wherein the electron cloud is being formed. And once when your exp exposure button is switched on, this electron cloud then is accelerated towards the anode and it hits the target. So the electron strikes the target and the kinetic energy of this uh, electrons are the converted to X-ray photon energy and also along with this process there is also heat dissipation occurring and then what happens is next is that these x-rays are found to be exited through this unleaded glass window so the size of the, the size and shape of the x-ray beam that is being directed out is found to be controlled by the lead collimators and then this x-ray beam travels down to the lead line uh, position indicating device which exits through the tube head at the opening of the position indicating device and which helps in the exposure of the patient. Then we have something called as a terminology called as a linear energy transfer. Sometimes in Viva they might ask what is this linear energy transfer. It is nothing other than the rate of loss of energy from a particle as it moves through the matter or a tissue. So this uh, factors that are affecting the linear energy transfer is that the size and charge of the particle if it is found to be greater the size and the charge of the particle then it is said that it is found to be a greater linear energy transfer and also the velocity is found to be decreased so it's uh, between the when compared with the alpha particles with the beta particles it is stated that the alpha particles have a higher linear energy transfer because it is found to be densely ionizable so they have a higher charge and also they have a lesser velocity that is why they have a higher linear energy transfer when compared to beta particles where beta particles is found to be less densely ionizing next we have two types of x-rays that have been produced that is the bremsstrahlung radiation and the characteristic radiation 
Bram Starling radiation it compresses around the 70% of the X-rays that have been produced. Then uh, characteristic radiation is found to be around 30%. Bram Starling meaning it's a German terminology meaning the breaking. What it refers to that uh, so it's a sudden breaking of the high speed electrons once it hits the tungsten target in the anode. So what happens here is that the incident electrons is found to be have more attracted towards the positively charged nucleus. So once it reaches the nucleus, it tries to slow down and it ceases. So it releases the X-ray photon. Next is the characteristic radiation. In characteristic radiation, what happens is that, and if an incident uh, electron it uh, reaches the innermost shell, that is in the K shell, it interacts with this electron in the uh, K shell, and this electron has been released. And uh, once the void has been created in this innermost shell, the electron from the L shell moves in uh, towards this void. And once this uh, it moves towards this void, there is this radiation that has been produced. That is called as the characteristic radiation. That is the loss of energy is the resultant of the binding binding energy differences between these two energy levels. That is from the K shell and the L shell. So to summarize, we spoke about each component of the X-ray machine and what are the role that it plays. And uh, then we spoke about how the X-rays are being produced. And then we moved on to what are the types of the X-rays that, uh, that are being produced. That is the bram Stratton radiation and the characteristic radiation. So the next session, I will be speaking about how is the interaction of the X-ray with the matter.